Uh, we did have this other angle of this chase, or not other angle, an extended view of this Chase Randall situation at Knoxville. I hadn't seen this before. Um, it was posted by Scott Rister. Reister? <coughs> Scott Reister, I think is his name. Um, let's see here. This is like an extended view of this Chase Randall situation. And I hadn't seen this. And it says, wild video after a scary wreck at the Knoxville races. Chase Randall's car erupts in flames. Incredible response by all. Randall drops and rolls. So this actually goes past that. We've all seen the flames go up and then the camera go away. This was actually posted at 4 p.m. today on Twitter. So you see Randall get out of the car. See, we all, all the clips I had saw had stopped at this point right as he pops out. This actually extends past that. He goes on the ground, starts rolling. The flame actually engulfs. I would say it engulfs at that point. Uh, they're spraying him down. Obviously, a big flame that not a lot of people had seen it or until that I had seen until seeing this today. Um, let me get it a little bit bigger for everybody to see. This was a really scary incident, almost the same spot as the Macedo incident last year, which was creepily enough um, happening in that same region of the racetrack. Obviously, the, tr uh, the track officials at Knoxville, some of the best, and got even better after the Macedo deal. You know, I heard my video that I took of the Macedo situation and put up. The officials there, you know, watched that. Chico, I heard it, Silver Dollar, a bunch of uh, fire safety officials came up to me after that Macedo incident and said they learned so much after that Macedo situation by watching my video on how to respond and things like that. And I heard even some of the people here with Knoxville uh, learned uh, from that situation. They probably learned the best because they were literally there involved. So I guess kind of the best area for it to happen because they probably trained for that set, uh, situation at that section of the racetrack as well, or at least had visual references of what to and what not to do based on last year as well. Uh, but this is just a little bit more extended. Now, I bring this up as well because there was an interesting post on uh, Twitter uh, by Kevin Swindell, and he he seems to be referencing a little bit more of a situation that isn't being attended to at least in his eyes, just a little bit. Obviously, uh, Infernal Armor. Hold on, hold on. Let me make sure I get this right. Let me put this... Uh, well, no. Jamie Ball assisted in getting the uh, Infernal Armor. I believe that's what it is with, with uh, Kevin Thomas Jr. The spray bottle. We interviewed Kevin Thomas Jr. about it. Uh, it it's a spray bottle deal you put on your suit. And I had a debate with a guy... Uh, in Australia, funny enough, he was always hating on American SFI regulations, but he was like, the spray on stuff, you know, it closes the pores on the suit and you can't breathe and a suit being br breathable is what makes it safe. And Kevin Thomas Jr. explained in our interview uh, that the the pores on the suit do not, you know, suck up and close until being exposed to extremes amount of heat. Once it, once it senses that heat, that's when the chemicals actually react and make that closed-off shield that we've all saw that product do. So it was really lucky that Chase Randall apparently got a bottle of that. Somebody gave it to him, and he sprayed it on the on uh, his uh, racing suit when this occurred. Apparently, the only burn, uh, it says right here, I believe, uh, minor uh, minor burns, or it said in the post, sorry, this last one with the incident, uh, slight burn around his chin. So that's all that uh, happened to Chase Randall with this incident. But what Kevin Swindell's talking about here is a completely other different situation that I actually halfway dealt with to, uh, this year. Uh, can we, he says, can we have a safety council meeting about mandating quality in tail tanks maybe going forward? Seems like the majority of our fire issues are self-inflicted to some extent outside of the tanks getting busted. Nothing really bad about what we have, but I can't go on or can't go buying anything nicer either. So this is more so against or a, a question on the tail tanks because we have seen tail tanks flare out. We have seen issues around tail tanks. The reason I say I had personal experience when I was actually in uh, PA a, a month ago uh, with Callum and the Trone team, there was an issue in hot laps and halfway in qualifying 
where Callum was getting some, uh, you know, uh, cold sensations and methanol was actually getting on him in the race car going around the track. Um, and there was a situation where there was an issue with the bladder of the fuel cell. And I was, li- I literally went down to TJ Stutz, Ethan Stutz, good people, Ethan Stutz, really cool guy, actually. Um, and got a tail tank and brought it back or brought it down, new bladder, new tank and everything like that, brought it down. They put it on the car, was able to race. But this is more talking about the tail tank safety, like mandating tail tank safety. Mike Hess comes in here. One of the first commenters, of course, uh, high limit now running high limit situation over there. Former world of outlaw guy, um, sprint car council met again at PRI this year. Fuel cells were brought up again for the 1,638 time. I know Tom has tried to pressure them, them to do something and they just seem to not care. With all the recent fuel cell failures, I would think they should be concerned. Uh, Kevin Swindell says that was terrifying to see it go up like that on Chase so fast. Thank God he was physically good from the crash to pop out. That's a, Imagine if he was knocked out, guys. Imagine if he was knocked out. That would have been really bad. One thing for sure or one thing for the shell to break, but another for the the bladder to break so easily as well. Uh, Somebody asked about the, uh, wonder why the fire suppression system didn't go or didn't work either. I know it didn't in the 2KS car, but don't think it went off in the Washington crash either. I know almost nothing about them, but they've been less than effective in what I've seen and think most are scared of them going off during maintenance. Unless you can get or unless you can't get out, I don't think you will ever pull it before you just attempt hopping out. Uh, mandating long. So this is a interesting uh, scenario around tail tank. Some guy even offered up a uh, new design. I guess this is uh, somebody says uh, he says I was a uh, on the original safety council asked to participate for my engineering background. I have some solutions. They are SFI 28.2 approved, 28.2 approved. Uh, in addition to strength, in, or strength improvements, the complete assembly is approximately 1,000 less than an industry standard tank. Prototypes shown. Interesting. That's similarly uh, resembling the Kevin Swindell midget tanks or the Swindell midget tanks they have on the Chili Bow midgets. Interesting enough. Just a little bit, but we'll get reactions on this. Do you think, and I definitely think, because I experienced this, the bladders, obviously you got Kevin Swindell worried, Mike Hess worried. He can't get nothing done. If Mike Hess can't get nothing done or implemented, what are we going to do? Are we really going to have to hit this Mark uh, Chevalier guy up and have him start busting these tail tanks out for the world to have? What's going on here? What what what, what do we need to do here? Because this fire deal is real. Fire suppression systems... I mean, where are they at, guys? I don't see fire suppression systems helping. So this glor- glorified fix is is glorifying burning in front of our eyes. That's twice now, guys, in the same spot at the best track in the country. Where did it even go off? At least, at least on Macedo's car, we saw it going off on the ground somewhere. Where is it here? Uh, and once again, when you got so much fuel in these race cars, what are you going to do even if the little bottle does go off? But that's two failures for sure. And they're saying it could have something to do with these tail tanks, regulations on how they're building them, bladder systems, something along the lines that needs to be changed. But what's going on? What what, what do you think? Let's hear it. Ready to rip, ready to reach, place my bets, hey, you never know when playing on hopes, what you can achieve, making the goal, 